Hey, Redcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. With special thanks to Revenant, a nerd in war paint, Antonio Hernandez, Ice Storm Shadow, Nathan Welch Jr., and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Wasteland 3, as we officially embark on the final leg of our journey. At this point, we've taken down three of our four primary targets, so that really just leaves Liberty and her three pet warlords. I did swing back by Colorado Springs, uh, but there really wasn't much to see. Nothing I felt was worth highlighting anyway. So I took care of our bookkeeping off screen. Um, I also did a small amount of grinding, just enough to update some of our gear. For example, uh, tossing that exo suit on Ian. And I may have uh, tweaked a few cosmetic options here and there, as evidenced by Sergeant Bonkers' new nightmare clown appearance, really embracing the spirit of El Rojo Payaso there. Aside from that, there were a couple of minor skill bumps. Uh, plus one leadership, plus one survival, plus one armor modding. But uh, otherwise, yeah, we're already pretty well kitted, so let's get to it. Oh, but there was one thing that it turns out I was overlooking, and um, it was pretty uh, big. So let's take care of that real quick. The ground shakes, the road cracks, your radio squeals with static. As you slam on the brakes, your headlights flash across gleaming mechanical legs, pincers, and heavy machine guns. It's a Scorpatron, a Scorpatron plated entirely in gold. Well, as uh, impressive and impractical as that might be, I'd say we're pretty old hands at uh, slaying Scorpatrons by now. The Scorpatron turns its gold-plated guns on you as your squad spills from the Kodiak and readies themselves. The battle is on. Now, I will say, uh, as much as I wish this was going to be an epic battle, as the uh, setup implied, we're going to stop this thing. The Wasteland 3 combat system does kind of break down once you hit higher levels, especially once you start grabbing all this endgame gear. Oh, uh, I did drop three points into explosives on Bonkers. And thus, the last of the Scorpitrons falls. I believe there's just five in Wasteland 3, and at this point we have uh, officially destroyed them all. Huh, that's odd. No... no loot. Hmm. Alright, well let's, um... Okay, there we go.
Yeah, yeah, that's a little more like it. Noah's teddy bear. The teddy bear looks at you with his button eyes, and you feel transported back to your childhood. He wears a medallion around his neck, which contains a piece of faded paper that reads, This bear should protect you on your way, and take you to the adventurous places that life has in store for you. Love from your parents, J and M. Oh, that's sweet. Doubly so, because uh, I believe that is a unique trinket designed by a player who won the Golden Scorpitron contest back when the game first launched. Uh, the first batch of people who encountered and defeated the Golden Scorpitron were entered into a raffle. Given the context, I'm going to assume it was one of Noah's parents that won. I entered the contest too, but uh, I'm actually glad that someone like this won, because... If I had gotten to design a trinket, it's a pretty safe bet that it would have been either a pun, an 80s pop culture reference, or both. We'll go ahead and slap that on Lucia. All right, all right. Let's see if we've got anything else around here. Ah, here we go. Looks like a pretty standard ammo crate. Hmm. Oh. Hold on. A tactical nuke and a neutron projector. Granted, our current sniper rifle's actually better, but, uh, still. I'm glad we, uh, snagged that before we headed back out. Moving on. Yuma County. A long abandoned racetrack, now used as the muster point for the Plains Gangs, intending to raid Colorado Springs. Desert Rangers, right? The ones the Patriarch made a deal with? Hey, <laughs> good to see you. Been hoping you'd show up. Patriarch's got a lot he wants done here, and we ain't got a lot of time to do it. Now here's the deal. Liberty Buchanan is sitting not 200 yards from here in her compound as we speak. But the way things stand, it would take a tactical nuke to crowbar her out. She's managed to make herself the queen of these heathens, the scar collectors, the payassos, and the last few Dorseys. Even the goddamn godfishers are licking her boots. Now, there ain't no way even a crew as tough as you could fight their way in and bring her out alive like the Patriarch wants. But I got a plan. Slow down a minute. Why don't we start with, who the heck are you? I'm your fucking lifeline out here, assholes. So show me some respect. Yeah, that's fair. 
I'm the mechanic. Now, that means I fix things, right? For the gangs, it's cars, and they trust me because I fix them good. But my real job is fixing things for the patriarch, like putting sand in the gas tank of Liberty's coop before it gets on the road. That's why he sent me out here. You get it? Can we get down to business now? How did you manage to survive when Liberty killed so many of the Patriarch's other spies? <laughs> How do you think I gained her trust? Oh, well, I can't say I like the sound of that. But I suppose it is in keeping with the uh, sort of environment the Patriarch has fostered. You sent other spies to their deaths to secure your own position? That's despicable. Hey, I'm willing to be the bad guy if that's what the job calls for. Are you? Now, have I passed your little test? Not sure. If you're such a fixer, what do you need us for? Simple. If I get caught trying to sabotage things, how long is it going to take the Patriarch to sneak another spy in here? Too long, that's how long. Liberty will already be knocking on his front door. But if you get caught, I'm still here, and the Patriarch can send another gang of expendable muscle heads to do the dirty work. Got it? I don't like this guy. But I suppose he's not wrong. Nice to know what you think of us. What's the plan? Okay, okay, listen. The gangs may be loyal to Liberty, but they hate each other's guts. All you need to do is get each gang thinking the others are screwing them somehow, and this place will go up like an ammo dump in a firestorm. The payasos and the godfishers are ready to go at each other's throats. They just need a little nudge. As for the scar collectors, they're as like to turn on themselves as they are on anyone else. What I'd do is talk to their slaves. They've always got dirt on all the infighting. I got a key to the pen they're kept in as a, huh, a gift. Take it. See what you can find. Maybe turn them against each other. How about some uh, info before we go? I can give you the broad strokes, but the nitty gritty is up to you. Who do you want to know about? The scar collectors? The payassos? The godfishers? All of the above. Uh, but start with the scar collectors. The biggest of the gangs, and the toughest. Slavers, body mod addicts, complete barbarians. Biggest weakness is, every one of those sons of bitches wants to be leader. So there's a lot of infighting. The boss right now is Steel Trap, who ousted Cordite. But he fights off challenges from his lieutenants every week, always looking over his shoulder. Maybe you can play on that somehow. Hmm. Tell us about the Payasos. The weakest of the gangs. And boy, does that piss them off. They want to be taken seriously so bad. Which is kind of funny since their whole thing is never taking anything seriously. Your friend dies. What a joke. Lose an arm. Hilarious. But man, do they get hot when other gangs disrespect them. The head clown is a shrimp named Lecherito. Meanest little fucker I ever met. Always with the put-downs and the insults. I think that's why they made him boss. Nobody could stand in the way of that mouth. And the godfishers? Scariest of the bunch. They think they can talk to their sky gods by tying people's living torsos to kites and flying them up to the clouds. The other gangs, at least you understand why they're killing you. The godfishers, who fucking knows? So their leader, 
star that dreams, thinks he's a goddamn messiah, and he hates having to deal with the other gangs. The only reason he's with him is he thinks it's his best shot at getting revenge on the patriarch. Otherwise, he'd make murder kites out of the other guys and ride into the sunset. I notice you, uh, didn't mention the Dorseys. Ah, forget about the Dorseys. They're Liberty's personal bodyguards now. They never come out of the compound and they never deal with the other gangs. Except to execute some fool who tries something stupid. You're gonna have to fight the Dorseys no matter what. You just want them to be the only ones you fight, right? All right, well, where's the slave pen? Just outside the main compound. But use my key and go through the side entrance. Otherwise, the gangs will see you and then the shit will hit the fan. Noted. Okay, we're good. We'll check it out. Good. Follow the racetrack north and you'll find the gang compound. Just don't get too close to the front gates. The sentries will attack anything that gets too close, gleefully. And listen, if you need any ammo, weapons, or supplies, talk to me. I get paid in trade, so I got plenty of gear. Which way is the compound? Keep going the way you were going when you drove in. Chain link fence, big gate, guards, you can't miss it. Only, unless you want to get killed, you should miss it. So, any gear? Sure, why not? Show me what you got. Ho, ho, ho! Just like Christmas. <laughs> yeah, you really don't want to go there. Didn't turn out too well for the last guy. All right, looks pretty standard. High tier generic gear, plus a couple of uniques, both of which are available back at base. Cybernetic implants, completely useless to us at this point. Assorted ammo. Ooh, a nice array of mid-tier mods. We'll take all of those. And that's pretty much it. We could use an SMG upgrade for Pazepi. The laser sprayer is not really hacking it, but I think she's okay with her uh, Atom driver for now. Sorry, I mean the um, Atom Smasher. Though, now that I've said it out loud, I do kind of wish it was called the Atom Driver. Okay. Godfisher Wind Farm to the south. Scar Collector Scrap Mines to the north. Let's go ahead and grab everything we can without this guy getting pissy, and then we will start exploring the surroundings. Sounds like the first place we should track down is the uh, slave pen. Get the 411 on local drama. Oh, hey, look at that. Just to clarify, I did not plan that. These containers are randomized. Minigun. Nice find, but we are already set with our modified Graviton Shredder. That's where we came in, so let's check the side door. I will say the uh, the mechanic there definitely feels like the sort of guy who's got his sight set on an eventual position of power. 
And he's exactly the sort of person you wouldn't want taking over for the Patriarch. I mean, there's a lot you can read into the uh, Patriarch's decisions, especially when it comes to his personal life with his family. But then you uh, look at someone like the mechanic there, who has essentially made himself indispensable by willfully sacrificing uh, the lives of all of his co-workers. Something which uh, I don't believe the Patriarch has ever actually done. Someone stacked several wrecked cars and topped it with a torch. Party on, Wayne. similar auto duels before the war. I don't think they were to the death, though. Well, could be. Demolition derbies are somewhat unpredictable. Uh, side note, I am fairly certain this is intended to be the Kokopa Speedway, which is about 50 miles west of Yuma. But, um... They do use some pretty condensed distances in Wasteland 3. In real life, uh, the Garden of the Gods, Colorado Springs, Broadmoor Heights, those are all spread out over like a 10 mile radius. Arena helmet. What you do with this helmet in life will echo in eternity. Dramatic. Yuma County Speedway Race. A recording from before the apocalypse of an exhilarating race at the Yuma County Speedway. of the Cactus Cup. It's been neck and neck this afternoon as Allison Rodriguez and Daryl Stone have led the pack. But now Sammy Martinez is coming up on the high side trying to pass Stone. Coming into the straightaway, Rodriguez has the lead. Stone switches to the inside. Here comes Rodriguez. We've got a three-way fight for the lead. This is going to be... Whoa! Stone's hit Rodriguez. Martinez can't get out of the way. And, and now he's hit Stone. Stone and Martinez are locked together and both cars are on fire. We've got a red flag, an emergency crews are trying to reach the cars. Oh man, this looks bad. Only uh, tangentially related, but I would absolutely love to someday see a proper turn-based adaptation of one of those really gritty, uh, granular automotive combat games from yesteryear, like, like Auto Duel or Car Wars. But I get it. It's something a lot of people have a hard time wrapping their heads around. Turn-based games are already a pretty niche market, even before you start working in uh, oddball concepts. That's got to be our main complex, so let's not go that way. Ooh, bison. When all this is over, we will free them, right? And that would be the slave pen. We will, of course, do what we can to help them, but that might be limited right now. Let's go ahead and knock this thing out. Looks like we've got two lined up nice and neat.
Just trying to spread out our ammo consumption a little. Honestly, I'm pretty sure we're tough enough that we could just bust in and take out Liberty and all of our amassed warlords in one fell swoop, but we'll uh, follow the intended path. This workbench is arrayed with every tool you could ever need to break down dead synths and robots, then build new tech from the spoils. I'm actually fairly certain that's one of the many placeholders in this game from uh, content that was ultimately cut before launch. In this case, a scavenging and crafting system. You could actually find a scavenging skillbook not far from here, which uh, I believe has since been removed in subsequent patches. They are, of course, now adding an actual crafting skill with a post-launch update, but I get the impression it's a bit different than what they originally had in mind. Bikini Heat 3 on VHS. The cardboard slipcover of this VHS tape has been carefully stored for ages. The blonde locks on the female lead still glisten in the sun. Screenplay by Chopper Lang. Okay. I have no idea what that's for, but uh, I guess we'll keep an eye out for a VCR. You know, uh, I have to imagine the whole weapon parts thing was also intended to be part of the original planned crafting and scavenging system. It just doesn't really make sense in the current implementation. The door's open. We're... Yeah, fuck it. They'll just catch us like always. Well, sure, with that attitude. Who are you guys? Hmm. The slave turns at the sound of your footsteps, and you see that he's blind. Blades are almost ready, masters. I just need... He pauses, then sniffs the air. You're not the masters. Too clean smelling. Who are you? I suppose it couldn't hurt, to be honest. We're the Desert Rangers, here to take down the gangs. Who are you? <laughs> Good one. Good one. Who are you, really? Oh, well, okay then. We're new here, trying to join up. Who are you? They call me Whetstone now. <laughs> Used to be boss slave and chief head knocker at the company store, <laughs> but then I lost my eyes. <laughs> now I make blades for the masters. <laughs> Anything we should know about Steel Trap, if we want to get in good with the Scar Collectors? <laughs> don't make fun of him. And don't make him jealous. Or you'll end up disappeared like Cordite and D-Sharp. Hmm. Well, Cordite we know about. D-Sharp is new. Steel Trap made Cordite disappear. He always says Cordite ran away, but I was working at the company store the night he disappeared, and I saw him put something in Cordite's drink. Shanghai, for sure. That's why I lost my eyes. The steel trap said I should stop seeing things. I 
see. And, um, who is D Sharp? She used to run the company store, uh, the bar where the overseers drink. I sang there too. Funny songs about Steel Trap sometimes. It, it, he didn't like that. Didn't like that the boys all laughed. So one night, poof, she's gone. I told the SCs she ran away, just like Cordite, but. <laughs> I still had my ears. I heard Steel Trap come into the bar, and I heard him drag her out. Don't know what he did with her, but she didn't just run away. Do the uh, other Scar Collectors know Steel Trap took D? You kidding? They cut him up for jerky. If they knew. Everybody loved D. Searched for her for weeks. Swore vengeance on, on whoever took her. Never found her, though. He must have buried her deep. Did you tell anyone about D's abduction? Not any scar collectors. <laughs> Don't want to lose my ears, too. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, can we buy any of your blades? Not supposed to, but... <laughs> he pauses and sniffs the wind, then leans in. Steel Trap says I'm only supposed to sell to the Scar Collectors, but he's a bad master, so why not? Great. Let's have a look. All right. <laughs> Just keep an eye out while you're looking, okay? You know, I uh, feel for the guy to an extent, but um, it is not hard to see how he ended up like he did, given uh, the slight lack of discretion. Also, for a uh, bladesmith, he has shockingly few blades. Though, we might come back for some of that spectrum armor. I'll have to check our loadouts between episodes. You think you've got it back? How can you stand it? Made me eat my own shit. Why don't they rise up? give it a rating up? on a scale of one to ten. You think that's worse than the godfishers hanging you on the wind with all your insides hanging up? But that hasn't happened to you, has it? Otherwise, you wouldn't be here talking to me. With the godfishers, it could happen any day. Yesterday, my friend Virgil accidentally made eye contact with one of Star that Dreams' his wives. Zip! Half an hour later, he's a kite. At least you know what the rules are. With Lecherito, you never know what's right or what's wrong until he's clown shooing you in the testicles. Delightful. Ha. Ah, they call me Stitches. I'm what passes for a doctor around here. You need some stitching? You pass for a doctor? I, uh, was an assistant to a doctor. I watched her cut a lot of legs off, so I know what I'm doing. Mostly. I assume she's referring to the Godfishers. Why do you heal the people who enslave you? Duh, because they'll kill me if I don't. You got a head wound or something? With shocking frequency. What do you charge? If you're in one of the gangs, it's free. <laughs> That's what being a slave is all about. But slaves and outsiders gotta pay. Um, I think we're okay. Okay, I'll be here. I mean, where would I go? These are the sum total of the slave's belongings. Oh, 
Oh, look at that. We've got a side access to the compound. That's handy. Somebody coming. Who are you? Sounds like you two don't like your masters. Who says so? We didn't say nothing. You trying to get us in trouble? Hey, we don't like them either. We're looking to make them turn on each other. Know anything that might do that? What's in it for us? Yeah, they'll kill us if they find out we talk to you. So it better be something good. <laughs> How about ten whole dollars? We could set you free. Set us free? <laughs> when? How? Where are we going? Are there jobs there? Food? Can you take our friends too? There's at least 200 of us. Try again, Abraham Lincoln. We need stuff we can use right now. All right, all right. I'm not really comfortable with uh, strong arming these guys and $10 feels kind of, uh, kind of like an insult. So, uh, you know what? Why don't you uh, tell me what you want? Uh, cash? A pack of coffin nails. A bottle of boars? Sure, I can do that. Let's start with the coffin nails. Fuck yeah! Let's see. What can we tell you? The two slaves whisper together for a moment. Then turn back to you. Okay, listen up. Lecherito's mad because his number two guy, Cucaracha, disappeared a few days ago. He thinks he might have ran off or something. But I saw the godfishers fly a new kite around the same time. And the body hanging from it had clown paint on the face. Also heard that Star the Dreams had some fool killed for messing with one of his wives. Maybe it's all connected, huh? Thanks for helping us out. Good luck. I think we can work with that. Can I still give these guys stuff? They're back. Whoever they are. What do you want now? Any more dirt for us? Nothing new. Yeah, fresh out of dirt. Well, really, I just wanted to give you stuff because I feel like you've earned it, but, um, all right, we'll be on our way. So at this point, we have compromising info on all three of Liberty's replacement warlords. So we just need to get them out of the picture and then we can confront her. As the mechanic said, we'll still have to deal with the Dorseys the good old-fashioned way, but that's fine. I think we can manage. We'll head for the uh, Godfishers and the Piassos first. See if we can knock out two birds with one stone. Hangry. So that's what the Snickers are for. Hey, strangers, over here! Ah, maybe you Mamons can help us out. You see, the Godfishers were traveling this way with some fresh kite making materials, but they ran into some giant bisons and they kind of got them trapped. We don't give a wet fart about the Godfishers. Oh, but they're poor slaves. Their plight has touched our hearts, and we want to, um, liberate them. If you take care of the bison, we'll grab the meat stick as uh, victims. And our boss, Risky Brisket, will give you something cool for your trouble, huh? She's down at Meat Clown, near the Godfisher Shrine. 
subtle, very, very subtle. He seems trustworthy. And, um, why aren't you doing this? Who, me? No, Jengas! Oh, I mean, Bison give me hives. He's a real problem. Uh-huh. You want to try that again? What are you really going to do with these slaves? Nothing. We promise. We're going to have them over for dinner and then say adios. Well, I will tell you what. We will non-committally agree to go check this out, and then we will um, almost certainly have to kill you on the way back out. I think that's a fair compromise. Thanks, Mamons. Despite his words, I don't reckon the clown has those folks' best interest at heart. What? No. Lucia, what? No. Meat back on the menu, cabron! We'll eat like kings! Risky can peddle those shitty clown burgers to somebody else! Que rico! Bison is pretty tasty. What's your favorite cut? Leg, no ribs, no cabeza, no... Wait, we're talking about bison, right? Meets me, cabron. Um, I assume they're still talking about bison. Man, I'm getting hungry. Probably. Oh, my. That may have been slight overkill. Nice work, cabros. We'll take those slaves down to Meat Clown and fatten them up. Oh, I give them a good meal. All right. All kidding aside, uh, we are letting these guys go. Sorry. Hey, we tell the jokes around here, Pendeos. And if you ain't joking, then you're dead. The payasos don't stand for no funny business, comprende? Now, obviously, we could just intimidate these guys into uh, backing down. But I feel like this is one of those situations where violence might actually be the answer. Screw it. No one's going to miss a few clowns. Um, with a possible exception for Sergeant Bonkers. Now you see, Mamones. You'll see what you get when you mess with the payasos. Shoot! They saw us! <laughs> yes, it is true, Red. Somehow they have indeed seen us. Can't imagine how. Miss someone? Oh, right. Hi. anymore.
Godfisher Kiting Ritual. This cassette is unlabeled, other than smears of blood and traces of... skin? Woe unto mankind, who set the skies aflame and filled the heavens with ash! For darkness has fallen on the broken earth, and the lords of the heavens have turned their faces from us! Thus, we must appease them with offerings, blood, and flesh, and bone. Strike off their limbs and bind their torsos to the kites, as has always been our way. Now, cast your sacrifices into the skies, brothers and sisters, and verily, the clouds shall part, and the earth will be born again! Hard pass. Um, hi. Thanks again for saving us, strangers. We'll make a run for it soon. Thanks again for saving us, strangers. We'll make a run for it soon. Hmm. Is it just me, or does this area feel like it's kind of rushed? Bike wheels, mufflers, and unrecognizable metal scrap have been warped and folded to build this strange observation tower. I actually really like that. But how would you get up there? Oh, I see. There's a ladder inside. Huh. Interesting. Not sure how stable or functional that would be, but... I find it very aesthetically pleasing. Oh, yeah, uh, watch your step. Someone seems to have uh, liquefied a bison. Okay, aside from the main compound, I think that gives us a pretty solid foothold in Yuma County. Not to mention we now have info on how to uh, turn the gangs against each other. I'd say that brings us to a pretty good breakpoint. Yeah, uh, we're pushing the 50 minute mark, so let's go ahead and hit the pause button for now, and we will pick up here next time as we proceed to the Godfisher Wind Farms. Should just be a matter of finding the right kite, and then we can have them at each other's throats. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Wasteland 3, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then feel free to push any of the buttons that do the things, or uh, maybe even check out the Patreon. Links are in the description. Keep an eye out while you're looking, okay? <laughs>